Food, shelter, and clothing are the basic needs of every individual. All of them are equally important, and human beings have always been experimenting with these three needs. We are achieving innovation and advancements in these needs of life as a result of human struggles to make something better and better. That holds in the case of clothing as well. Since the prehistoric era, there's been a drastic change in the clothes that humans wear. But unfortunately, we give the least importance to focus and understand about clothes, their types, and the kinds of fabrics we should wear. Hey viewers, welcome back to The Social Tomatoes, the platform where you come for expert reviews for your better understanding. Do you wear the same kind of clothes every time, every day? No, you don't, as the fabric of your shirt is different than that of your jeans and socks. Furthermore, the type of clothes you wear also vary from season to season. One thing is pretty clear that one kind of clothing is not perfect for all the times and weathers. And in the same weather, you change clothes from occasion to occasion. Like for office, you wear formal clothing, which most probably includes two pieces or three piece suits. And for sports, you wear another kind of dress with a different comfort level. All of them are made of a different kind of fabric. How fabric is found in such a great variety? Which category is suitable for you the most? How these fabrics react with your skin? We'll cover this all in today's video. Early men used only the large leaves of trees to cover the body with the time it was seen that even animal skin can be used as a cover for the body. Soon, animal furs, fleece, and skin were employed as clothes. However, these were not clothes in the true sense, right? They help cover the body, no doubt. But clothes we use today are not leaves of the plant directly. We rather use plant products to synthesize fine threads, which are used further into beautiful fabric. These are useful in making clothes that we wear. Let's understand the beautiful science behind the process making of fibers and turning them into fabrics. To begin with, let's understand a few terms. What are fibers? In simple words, these are significantly long threads, extremely long threads that could be converted into yarn. And what are yarns, by the way? Yarns are nothing but long, continuous threads that could be directly woven into fabrics. And before you ask what fabrics are these are the pieces of clothes that we use for making our clothes. That means fibers are the threads that are used to make long and continuous usable yarns. And the yarn is interwoven to form pieces of fabric that could be cut and stitched to make clothes. Simple, isn't it? This means that fiber is the process of the clothes you wear. So to learn about the fabrics, we need to understand the type of fibers first. What do you mean by types of fibers? Fibers are just thin and long threads. Isn't it that simple? Not entirely so. Tell me, which type of clothes are preferred by us during summer? Soft and light clothes usually made of cotton, right? And during winter? Cozy and thick wool clothes occupy the list. Bags made up of clothes need to be strong rather than being comfortable. This tensile strength is provided by jute fiber. For some details on jute fibers, visit the video here to know the benefits of jute fiber bags over plastic bags. What about soft and glossy clothes used in daily life? They're made up of acrylic fibers. These few examples indicate that there's a variety of fabrics available for our use. For our simplicity, we divide fibers into two major categories. One category is natural fiber, and the other is synthetic fiber. Natural fiber, as the name says, is obtained from natural sources. So what could its sources be? Needless to say, that its sources are both plant and animal, and the list a few examples of each type. Plants like cotton and jute give us natural fibers. Cotton is fully breathable, soft on the skin, keeps you cool in summer, and worn and most widely produced fiber on the planet. Similarly, animals like sheep, goats, camel, and so many are used for their fur and fleece. These clothes go easy on the skin and are most popularly used. Fabrics like wool and silk are obtained from this origin. Wool is fire resistant and also regulates moisture and temperature. In contrast to these natural fibers, the synthetic ones are made by us in the laboratory or industries. To be precise, nylon, polyester, and acrylic are the best examples to study on the synthetic fiber category. But these fabrics may sometimes be toxic for your body. It may cause skin problems, bad odors, and other health-related issues. But how a fabric can irritate your skin? Clothes made of such fibers do not help in aeration when you perspire. Sweat is not absorbed, and this promotes bacterial growth, causing rashes and various other skin problems. 
With that being said, let us understand that how these clothes make your skin itchy. Their fibers are of nature. When woven into a piece of fabric, they do not allow passage of the air from the clothes to skin, but these clothes can be comfortable in winter when you do not perspire much and rashes are least likely to occur. It doesn't only harm your skin, these synthetic clothes are not even harmful to the environment. Acrylic fabric leases microscopic plastic fibers into the environment, which disrupt food chains. Knowing the facts that these clothes are not good for many reasons, why people still buy them then? Aesthetic reasons. Yes, these clothes are shiny and skin fit. This makes them attractive to wear. Secondly, these synthetic clothes are much cheaper in buying. Do you know? Some synthetic fibers are made using natural fibers as a starting material. Yes, it's true. Natural fibers are chemically processed and modified significantly to gain another category of fibers. These are called semi-synthetic fibers. Rayon and artificial wool are a couple of examples of this category. However, natural fibers still tops the chart, especially in the garment industry for its various benefits over synthetic fibers. But these are very expensive. We've been aiming at determining the effect of fabric structure on liquid absorption, transport, and permeability properties, which are important factors in people's perception of wear comfort. Some fabric types highly affect the skin water content, skin pH, and skin temperature. The blending of fiber types has been the subject of some consideration. To achieve this, fabrics were very well matched structurally, for instance, a blend of 10% wool, 5% cotton, and 2% acrylics used to achieve various qualities in one type of fabric. So will you be conscious next time for the type of fabric you're buying? How has this video helped in terms of awareness? Let us know in the comments section below.